What is a program? A program is a sequence of instructions that specifies how to perform a computation. The computation might be something mathematical, such as solving a system of equations or finding the roots of a polynomial. But it can also be a symbolic computation, such as searching and replacing text in a document or, strangely enough, compiling a program. The details look different in different languages. But a few basic instructions appear in just about every language. Input. Get data from the keyboard, a file, or some other device. Output. Display data on the screen or send data to a file or other device. Math. Perform basic mathematical operations like addition and multiplication. Conditional execution. Check for certain conditions and execute the appropriate sequence of statements. Repetition. Perform some action repeatedly, usually with some variation. Believe it or not, that's pretty much all there is to it. Every program you have ever used, no matter how complicated, is made up of instructions that look more or less like these. Thus, we can describe programming as the process of breaking a large complex task into smaller and smaller subtasks until the subtasks are simple enough to be performed with one of these basic instructions. That may be a little vague, but we will come back to this topic later when we talk about algorithms. What is debugging? Programming is a complex process. And because it is done by human beings, it often leads to errors. For whimsical reasons. Programming errors are called bugs. And the process of tracking them down and correcting them is called debugging. Three kinds of errors can occur in a program. Syntax errors, runtime errors, and semantic errors. It is useful to distinguish between them in order to track them down more quickly. We will look into more detail about the first error, syntax errors. Python can only execute a program if the program is syntactically correct, otherwise, the process fails and returns an error message. Syntax refers to the structure of a program and the rules about that structure. For example, misspelling a Python keyword can cause syntax errors. In the following example, the word keyword has been incorrectly spelt with a capital W. Note that in this case, the error message is a little misleading since the arrow points to the wrong part of the code. Another typical syntax error is when you have the wrong number of brackets in function calls or expressions. In the following example, a bracket is missing to complete the expression at the end of the line. Note that the error message points to the line below where the error actually occurs. For most readers, a few syntax errors are not a significant problem which is why we can read the poetry of E.E. E. Cummings without spewing error messages. Python is not so forgiving. If there is a single syntax error anywhere in your program, Python will print an error message in quit, and you will not be able to run your program. During the first few weeks of your programming career, you will probably spend a lot of time tracking down syntax errors. As you gain experience though, you will make fewer errors and find them faster. The second type of error is a runtime error. So called because the error does not appear until you run the program. These errors are also called exceptions because they usually indicate that something exceptional and bad has happened. Runtime errors are rare in the simple programs you will see in the first few chapters. So it might be a while before you encounter one. The third type of error is the semantic error. If there is a semantic error in your program, it will run successfully. In the sense that the computer will not generate any error messages. But it will not do the right thing. It will do something else. Specifically. It will do what you told it to do. The problem is that the program you wrote is not the program you wanted to write. The meaning of the program, its semantics, is wrong. Identifying semantic errors can be tricky because it requires you to work backward by looking at the output of the program and trying to figure out what it is doing. One of the most important skills you will acquire is debugging. Although it can be frustrating, debugging is one of the most intellectually rich, challenging, and interesting parts of programming. In some ways, debugging is like detective work. You are confronted with clues, and you have to infer the processes and events that led to the results you see. Debugging is also like an experimental science. Once you have an idea of what is going wrong, you modify your program and try again. If your hypothesis was correct, then you can predict the result of the modification, and you take a step closer to a working program. If your hypothesis was wrong, you have to come up with a new one. As Sherlock Holmes pointed out, when you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. For some people, programming and debugging are the same thing. That is, programming is the process of gradually debugging a program. 
until it does what you want. The idea is that you should start with a program that does something and make small modifications. Debugging them, as you go, so that you always have a working program.